Well, welcome to I Didn't Know That, the show about things I didn't know. And we're at uh, Tarps Are Us in Holly with Andy Krause. Thanks for joining us today, Andy. You're welcome, thank um, you. I didn't realize that uh, tarps and covers and upholstery just didn't magically appear and in finished form. <laughs> it takes some work to, to do those things. Right, to, to work with the material and, and to pattern it, to, to, to shape it, to, yes, to, to make a, a finished project, yes, it, it, it takes some time. Yes, yeah, so Andy's going to show us how he sews on some material. So let's, let's dive right in, Andy. All right, come on over. So I have a couple machines here. I have uh, just a standard uh, console. Uh, it's called a 206 RB5. It's a pretty common uh, straight stitch sewing machine. Um, I also have a duplicate machine, except it is uh, longer, a longer arm on it. It's got a 25 inch arm versus this one has a 10 inch arm. So it gets you further into your material and your project, what you want to work on. It's, it's not your grandma's old singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. It's 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 an industrial machine. Um, it's it's pretty common to use this like on upholstery or or lighter duty sewing. Um, not really really heavy materials, but actually surprisingly, this goes through a lot of uh, of uh, materials that we use here. So it tarps for us. But yeah, so I'll show you um, just kind of how the machine operates real quick, and then um, at the same time too, we're gonna we're gonna do a demonstrate a top stitch where I take two pieces of material and sew them together with a finished project a product of a top stitch. So, and how long does it take you to do something? I mean, let's let's say you know right now a, a pontoon seat reupholstery. That's a lot of seat. <laughs> yes, upholstery can. It's hard to put exact time on it because you know sometimes you just you get into things that you don't necessarily expect and it just adds time and hours to your project. Um, making a bow cover or a pontoon cover, which is pretty common here. Um, when I first started out making them, I was probably, it probably took me a good 25 hours um, at least to get uh, from beginning to end to finish it up. Now we've got to trim down to about 10 minutes. Oh, or wow. 10 minutes. 10, 10 hours. hours. 10 <laughs> yeah. hours. 10, yep. So, yep, yeah, things are going well. So we have two pieces of material. Again, this is what we're going to be trying to accomplish, uh, just a simple top stitch. And a lot of times you'll find it on the side of your pair of pants, your jeans, things like that. So we'll take our two pieces together. They're both kind of inside out, so to speak. and just sew it together. There's always uh, two, st two sets of uh, stitching on here, so to speak, on a sewing machine. You have your top thread, and you can't see it, but there's a bobbin underneath there, a, a bottom thread. And how a stitch works is uh, the two needles kind of come together as such and they'll catch each other and make a knot. So every time you see Im uh, gaps on your, on your hoops, that's essentially where the knot is and where it's pulling it together. And that's what holds that stitch together. So now we have the piece of material like that sewed together. Now we're going to finish it and fold it over and make a top stitch. How long did it take you to learn how to do all this? Oh. Probably about two years, I suppose. I'm I always tell people that when you learn how to do these, this, the first thing is to learn how to use the sewing machine and how to operate the sewing machine. And then the second thing is to learn how to have the material go through the sewing machine so it does what you want it to do. Impressive. I'm hearkening back to my home ec days and yeah. my stuff did not look like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're not exactly straight, but I was going fast for the project. So, but yeah, so there's your, there's your top stitch. It's sewed together twice, just like so. And uh, it's a nice strong stitch that'll lay flat and looks good. At Tarps for us, we emphasize a lot on probably more big tarps and um, covering big things. Um, sewing big textiles. We do a lot of roll tarps on trucks, as in like a hopper bottom trailer and dump, 
uh, dump truck. Uh, the roll tarps that you see that go side to side, I'll install those, we'll repair those, we sell parts for them. Um, I'm a dealer for several different uh, 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 manufacturers out there. Um, we, make our, we make our own pot, uh, custom pontoon covers and boat covers. And yep, I will do some upholstery. Um, during the summertime when things are busy, I'll do smaller things like a seat um, here and there. Um, in the wintertime, I'll do more bigger jobs like a whole entire you know, pontoon uh, furniture group, a uh, whole boat furniture group, things like that. So this particular customer wants to get a brand new floor um, on their on their pontoon. So an upgrade from carpet to the vinyl vinyl flooring, which is more and more common these days. Some people say it's more slippery. I don't necessarily think it's more slippery. I do think it's more durable. It's it doesn't promote as much green stuff, algae growth, uh, mold growth. So it's a lot cleaner uh, fabric. With this particular model. Um, they all, they're all kind of the same. Um, we're we're going to we start by taking off just your corners and just taking it off piece by piece like a puzzle. Um, we started with our, our front two corners and then we're pulling our seats out and then we're pulling our sidewalls off and then that is the front. Basically get it all the way down to your carpet and then we'll remove the carpet and put brand new flooring on and put it all back together. So. I was looking on your website and there's some kind of unique things that you've done with kind of tarps. I, sure. I saw some screened in kind yeah, of almost porch things. Yeah, enclosures for a gazebo. Um, I've, I've done a huge roll door for a, for a grain elevator. That was unique. Um, that was about 30 feet by 16 feet wide. That was huge. Um, I had an old, uh, like a 1950s Suzuki, it's like a little four, two stroke, like a chainsaw motor in there, and uh, rebuilt the enclosures and the doors and the upholstery on that, that was neat. And the guy was actually taking that to Alaska and that was gonna be his Alaskan truck, so that was kinda cool. Um, but yeah, you know, we do a lot of repairs when it comes to textiles of all kinds. It can be, I mean, I've sewed carpet, I've sewed boat covers and pontoon covers and lift covers. I've sold belts, I've sold suspenders, I've sold patches on vests. So, you know, if, if we can get at it with the sewing machine, we can, we can sew it. And, and, okay, this just shows my ignorance on this stuff, but okay, so if you have a rip in your tarp, sure. for, or your cover for your pontoon, yep. you don't need a whole new cover, or do you have, can you repair that, or how does that work? Um, in most cases, you can repair it. Um, I, 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 I relate, like, tarps and material quality and, like, the, the age that it's at. Um, I compare it to like tires and wear on a, like the tread on a tire and how much life you have left on that tire. Same thing kind of with your material and your textile. There's usually coatings on there. Um, at least for like the newer materials, there'll be a, like either a, an acrylic coating, a vinyl coating, a PVC coating. Um, the days of like the old traditional canvas, the cotton canvas, the, the wax canvas, those are kind of, I mean, they're still practical with certain applications, but uh, in most cases, we don't use that too much anymore. You see canvas more for like artists and, and you know, in their framework, what they paint on. So, um, but um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? <laughs> I don't even remember <laughs> the question I asked. Patching. <laughs> patching stuff, sure. So yeah, as far as patching, um, a lot of times it's going to be kind of like a, a patch that you'll see if you rip your jeans. You'll have a you have a patch and you'll have stitch marks. I call it like an EKG stitch, where it's up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, really, just to hold the material together, reinforce it again, um, and it should be good as new. Might have a little scar to it, but um, I try to be creative with the with the repairs so that they kind of look neat. It is what it is, but at least so it looks somewhat neat, like a, almost like a tattoo on it. So, sure. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So, in if somebody was interested in in seeing what you can do, do you give a quote? How does that work? You, you know, easiest way to do it is stop down. Um, I can certainly do things over the phone, but. Um, it's hard to know exactly without measurements and details and specifics. So if you ever are wanting me to make anything for you, custom of any sort, um, our, there's our, our common things that we do, but uh, just stop down with an idea. And if you want it covered, we can probably cover it for you. We just need, yeah, your length, your width, your height, your, your dimensions, and, and then we can kind of tailor it from there. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks, Andy, for joining us yeah. on I Didn't Know That. I hope you learned a little something. Um, like I say, I always do with this show. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.